Hello, welcome, Cabbage here. In Magic the Gathering, let's open some physical product. And I have so many other videos to make uh, for other games. Uh, but I wanted to make this one here because I did get something nice. And then, with all of the uh, changes going on uh, with my channel lately, I've gotten a lot of comments, including a surprising number of uh, people talking about Magic the Gathering. And then, like, in the few videos that I put up, uh, they got something from it, so... Yeah, I am happy to uh, put up more uh, content about it. I feel like the space is so full on YouTube that I don't know what I could possibly add. Uh, but maybe for the people that overlap uh, between liking Magic the Gathering and then the other games that I play, uh, these videos could be good. But what I have is one pack of Dominaria Remastered, which just came out. And then uh, the name of the video and then the concept is directly stolen from uh, Loading Ready Run, which is a, a YouTube channel that I subscribe to. Uh, it's a bunch of uh, Canadian people that play Magic. And then interesting thing about them is that they have their own uh, format that they created, which I like a lot, actually. Uh, Canadian Highlander, I think it's called. It's a 100 card singleton, and it's 1v1, and each player has 25 life. Uh, there's no commanders. And then I think you start with 25 life. Uh, but I really like singleton formats. When we can use, you know, up to four copies of one card, I always uh, kind of waffle on, like, how many copies of a card to use. Uh, but with singleton, you know, that takes that decision out of your hands. Uh, of course, you're going to be playing uh, multiple cards of a uh, similar effect in order uh, to get redundancy, get a little bit more uh, consistency with your uh, pulls, but still. Uh, and then I also just enjoy having more different cards rather than having a bunch of the uh, same ones. So yeah, I do like Canadian Highlander. And then in uh, Magic the Gathering Arena, the uh, digital version, it's uh, Gladiator, which comes around once in a while. I wish uh, they would make it like a permanent uh, queue that we could play whenever. Uh, but yeah, that is a uh, nice mode. But with the uh, Crack a Pack episode, what they do is they just take one pack of cards and open it and then talk way too long about every card, so we can do that here. I wanted to buy a box of just the regular, the draft uh, packs, uh, but for some reason it's way more expensive here in Japan than it is in uh, you know English-speaking countries. So uh, I didn't buy a box, which is very sad. Uh, what I did instead is I bought a bunch of singles, and then they have a lot of retro border cards. Uh, and so I got a bunch of those, including just basic lands. Uh, but one single that I bought that I was super happy to get was Yogmoth. Finally got him. And uh, yeah, if you saw my opening of uh, Time Spiral Remastered, uh, that box, which is kind of a um, predecessor of this set, I was hoping to get Yogmoth. I did not, so picked up this guy. The crazy thing is that I got this guy for the same price as one pack of this the uh, collector's edition. That's how expensive this stuff is here. What's weird is that this is printed in Japan. You would think it would cost less, but I guess not. Um, so yeah, about 3,000 yen for these two each. But then I looked at the seller where I got this one. This is now 5,000 yen since I bought it. So I guess I got it at a good time, which is like two days after release. Uh, there are other versions of this. There's like a retro uh, frame one, which would be cool. And then there's like a borderless alternate artwork, which would also be cool, but yeah, I'll just be happy with the single here for now. Okay, but let's talk about what we got here. Uh, I have never bought a pack of uh, collector's edition, so this is kind of cool. First, we have a foil token for a zombie, Tutu. Can you see the uh, foiliness? And then cat. Two, two. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And a lot of people are talking about the uh, quality of these cards and also like the foils not curling. So you can see that this is not curling. I've had these cards about a week now, I think. Okay, next here is a retro frame foil. That's pretty crazy. This is a glory, I think. 3-3 three, three flying. Uh, you can spend three, choose a color, and then all of your permanents have protection. All of your creatures, rather, have protection from that color until end of turn. So that's pretty good. 
All right, this is pretty crazy. Time Stretch. This got a reprint in this set. Uh, 10 mana, but you cast it, and then you can take two turns. Two extra turns. Most of the extra turn spells are just one extra spell, but this is two. Unfortunately, this is not my playstyle to play with extra turns, but maybe I can sell it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, and then um, these um, kind of really sought-after reprint cards, they're also uh, retro borders or other stuff like that. I would have liked that more than the extended, but it's cool. Okay, and then we have one of the tutors, Worldly Tutor, I think. One mana, instant, and then we can search our deck for a creature card in this uh, green version, and then put it on top of our deck. I would have liked the uh, the black, the uh, demonic tutor, was it, I think? Or vampiric tutor, where you can search your deck for any card. I like to play black. <laughs> and this one's interesting. Another foil rare. Uh, but you can spend two, sacrifice this guy, and then Exile, and Attacking Creature. That's pretty good. And Foil here, too. All right. And then this guy, which I'm actually kind of excited about. Valduck? Varduck? Something? But I actually have a, a commander deck of him in Arena. Uh, but basically, the more equipment and auras on him, you can create that many 3-1 uh, haste trample guys and then they're exiled at the end of uh, the turn. And so yeah, I can play like lots of uh, draft chaff, you know, the one mana uh, artifacts or equipment or auras, put them on this guy and then have a bunch of guys attacking every turn. So I might want to make a physical version of this guy. It's very cool to have the, uh, the foil retro frame. <laughs> yeah, one of the better uncommon commanders, I think. Yeah, I like him. I was happy about that. Okay, retro frame. Juggernaut. No one cares. Must attack every turn. <laughs> and retro frame of Tiana. This might be an interesting commander as well. But I love how they choose uh, certain cards or like certain artworks so that they look good with the retro frame. And this is definitely one of them. What do you do? Flying first strike. Uh, let's see. When an aura or an equipment enters the battlefield, you can return something from your graveyard. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Might be another interesting commander. Okay. And here is a retro frame island foil. And uh, yeah, these are like two bucks each. These uh, retro frame foiled lands. Very, very cool. Alrighty. And then we have like a bunch of commons and uncommons. Here's a foil of the Wall of Junk. I actually wanted this for my uh, Arcades deck. He can make your walls attack. And then a 7-7 seven, seven for two mana is a pretty good deal here. Uh, if it blocks, you have to sacrifice it. But in that deck, it's never going to block. So that's perfect. <laughs> Also foil. Okay, here is a uh, gem palm goblin. And I actually like this newer artwork more than the original. I kind of think about making a uh, goblin commander deck as well. I got that uh, red green stained glass goblin in a uh, previous video, so that would be cool. Uh, what's this? It's a drake. Common. I don't think I have anything to say about this. Okay. And another Juggernaut. This is the modern frame foil. No one cares. <laughs> and this was really cool to get. This is a lonely sandbar, I think. Or something. Uh, but it's a cycling land. It's just an island, it comes into play tapped, which is not good, but you can cycle it. And so if you pull this very late in the game when you don't need lands anymore, you can toss this and pull a different card. And foil, very cool. 
All right, and then this guy, just a 2-2 uh, two, two for two. And then if you play multiple copies of this, you get more life every time you play one. Not that exciting. And then this was kind of cool. I forget what this card is called, but it came out fairly recently, but it's an effect that I really like. Uh, you can look at the uh, top four cards of your library, uh, put one of them into your hand, and then put the rest on the bottom of your library. Um, I have some decks like um, where I'm trying to win with uh, Maze's End or with the uh, Strixhaven Stadium. I like those uh, alternative uh, win con uh, strategies. And this card can help you get through your deck quickly. Find the cards that you need uh, to make that win happen. And I uh, really like the artwork. It's kind of uh, old-fashioned. Artist is Sam Guay, which I don't know if that is related to Rebecca Guay. But uh, kind of a similar uh, art style as well. So very cool. And a foil. <laughs> okay, so that was a crack-a-pack of the Dominaria Remastered, the uh, Collector's Edition. So that was very cool. Probably the only uh, pack I'm ever going to buy of this, unless prices go down. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Take care.